So, we've had a look at the standard increase by doing a 4 and 1, so let's imagine we were going to grow this ring. Might add a ring here, and a ring here, which would then flow the pattern further in the same way as we can see in the rest of this that I've quickly made. However, when we're doing a proper expansion or a contraction, we don't do that anymore. One side actually has not two, but three rings. And simply, rather than having one of the, well, most of the rings going into their patterns, so let's say I expand these two on. They won't be intermixing with these. They'll actually end up with one on its own and not following that same 4-in-1 pattern at the moment. And it will look like this. So now, this ring in the middle here is not fitted into four, but five rings, because you have these in your normal corners, which is a standard 4-in-1 pattern, but this ring is on its own, and it's simply stuck in between this ring and this ring. So it's just out here, as you can see, just on its own. Now this has a practical use, and I'll show you an example. So here's one I made earlier. This is an incomplete coif, quaff, whichever you want to call it. It used to fit around my head and become an almost circular motion without going awry. Now if I tried to use the basic 4-in-1 pattern, I'll either end up with a square sheet that tries to cover a round head, not very effectively, or I'd end up doing something that just makes it go completely awry. Now this is showing just how it can work. Now with these, you've got this in the middle here. Let me show you close up. It might be a bit difficult to notice in all of this pattern going all everywhere. But it all starts from here. This ring in the centre has six rings around it. All going around in a near circle, or more likely a hexagon. And each of these six parts has one of those expans expansions I showed earlier. So it has a ring that's initially on its own, and it grows out until we have a finished product, which is more like this, a hexagon. It's not a perfect circle, but it'll do the trick. So on each of these corners, if I just take, let's say, this one, at this part on the end, this ring, apart from being attached to that ring, let me just bring it up a bit closer, apart from being attached to the one that my flat uh, plier head is attached to, this ring, besides that, is on its own. And what that does is that by having that 3-in-1 expansion, well, 5-in-1 rather, expansion with 3 on one side and 2 on the other, you get this sort of expansion and contraction effect. So all of these here, in between each of the six points, it starts with more rings and then decreases. So in the centre, you've got the six points on their own with nothing in between them. And then on the next row, one normal four and one pattern in between. And then two, three, four, five, six, in fact, let me count them. In this row we have two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, oh, ten in between. So hence, with each corner expanding, it then allows this pattern to grow without it ending up in just a four-in-one squarish pattern. And that's very useful, again, for creating various expansions and contractions, such as here. We start with this hexagon that needs to grow over a head, so that I can turn it into coif later on. It's also useful if you've got, for example, sleeves on male garments, so you can actually expand and contract them, because, of course, the upper arms are thicker than the forearms. So you can have it tapering down a bit more towards the wrist. You can have that triangulation going on. And a variety of other uses as well. Again, it's a bit like, I think they call it darting or something like that, in normal clothing making. So in tailoring, you have that effect where you have that triangulation, it contracts and expands to have certain parts wider than other parts. You have a narrower part and a wider part. And this expansion and contraction effect does precisely that.
So this is the most contracted. This is just the six points on their own surrounding that ring. Obviously they're not splayed all the way out to here. Whereas at this part, it's much wider and it allows that almost circular effect. Well, here's one I, well, okay, I didn't actually make it. This one I bought online. But here you can see a similar sort of 4-in-1 pattern. You've got some expansions and contractions to allow things like the sleeves. And besides that, the individual rings, I'll show you a close-up. My gloved hand is not going to show it well. So we use this piece of cloth instead. This will just show you what the individual rings look like. So, here, you'll see certain bits, like that bit there. That's where it's been flattened, and you've got a rivet popped through. In fact, some rings are actually done a bit like washers, so they are fairly flat all the way around. But it's the same concept with riveted rings. You've got a similar sort of patterns and all the things I've taught you before. But the difference is, when each ring is closed, when you're sure that it's in the right place, it's got a hole punched in the middle, and then a rivet goes through. And that stops it from coming apart. You saw that when I use the pliers, I can easily open and close the rings. Of course, when you've got something like a spear trying to go through, you don't want that to happen. So these rivets keep it in place a lot more securely and permanently. Thank you for watching today's video. And as soon as I've got the koi finished, I'll do a video about that as well. I've got videos about male armour and its historical uses and whatnot, as well as its features, advantages and disadvantages, and even details about tailoring and armour and things like that as well. So, thank you very much for watching, and I shall see you in the next video. Goodbye.